kind of talk about later is, is and I, I know Dr. Chandri is very into energy, energy medicine. It's certainly where my commitment is in the future, and I think this is important. And one of the things we probably will do here in a workshop this afternoon is a little bit of a REVA test. And a REVA test developed by Dr. Banis in Germany is getting into deep-seated emotional conflicts. You know, you might ask yourself, why did you get into a point where you were so depressed that you needed psychiatry or antidepressants or whatever mm -hmm. medicines you're on? And we're not judging the medicines. But the point is, what, what happened when you were young that may have set you to a point where you had a deep-seated emotional conflict? Does that make sense? Yeah, no, no. I don't get along with my mother. She's very um, privileged, and it affected everything about my life. Um, and I'm not she was smothering, but at the same time, deleted. Mm -hmm. So it was a very, and my dad traveled. So it was a very weird relationship. And so I couldn't express my true self. And so I mean, I've been, you know, basically, mm -hmm. uh, long story. But, uh, uh, but you know, I understand that that's exactly what it was. It was I was hindered, and I couldn't go into the person I wanted to become. So they just said, take medicine. And then I went, the medicine, I, I didn't have an incident, if you will. They just made me, they just said, Feel yeah, and that's my point. My point is that when we study this psych, uh, energetic psychiatry, it's never the incident. Uh, my dad was an alcoholic. My mother and dad divorced when I was five. Uh, people didn't like me because of my skin color. Uh, you know, grandfather died. I was abused. It's always the perception. It's the perception of it. It's not the incident. And this is where I think psychiatry kind of misses the point, and I'm not trying to judge psychiatry. When I walked in to Seclair today, I knew it was a good energy place because the first thing I looked at was Eckhart Tolle's book, The Power of Now, which is like my favorite book of all time. And, you know, and Tolle has been a guru to me, but, you know, one of the things he says that I always talk, think about, and he says, the reason that modern psychiatry cannot cure anyone, even though the treatments might be fine, is because the real problem is the deep-seated emotional conflict. He calls it a psychological parasite. It's exactly what it is. It's like getting a parasite because you had bad water in Mexico and it's manifesting in your gut. Oh, and maybe 25 days a month it's dormant and everything's fine, but when it's active, your bowels get a little crazy. Psychological parasites are the same way. We have that 5% of the time, 15% of the time, some people hire when they lose it. And when they lose it, they're not themselves. They might be eating a bunch of chocolate. They might blow something away on the turnpike. They may scream and yell. They may throw shoes at people. They may hide in the room. Their, their pain body is active. This is their parasite. And sometimes in, in our way of thinking of it, we have to take this, identify it, because it has a name, and we have to melt it away. And in my way, it's energy and homeopathic that does it. You know? uh, I have a question about eating for your blood type. Do you believe in that? Generally, I don't, but I do believe that the guy did great research. I, I traveled to Africa a few years ago with one of his assistants, who I guess helped write the book. Yeah, I have a problem with it. And, I, and again, I'm not the expert. I read it, and I think that the research is good. And I have utilized it mostly for, like, allergies. So you're type AB, and maybe you're more allergic to wheat. When you get rid of wheat, things happen. But the whole aspect of, well, here's my blood type when I was a caveman, and I should eat meat or be a vegetarian. I don't think I'd buy that, but that's my opinion. Have you read the book? <laughs> no. no. Okay. I'm glad that you picked up on that question. And the answer. <laughs> I had no clue. Well, thanks for calling. We appreciate your call today. Thank you. Okay, this is Dr. Dan. We're here speaking today with our special guest, Dr. Safdar Chaudhry. We're here at the Seclair Integrative Psychiatric Medical Practice here in Export, PA. Beautiful facility. Our phone numbers, the lines are open, 412-825-6262. Dr. Sean, why don't you continue and tell us a little bit about your practice here, please. So uh, I even want to pick up on that last comment that you were making, Dr. Wagner. Um, the, it's kind of interesting that I, I just saw someone who was like almost like 80-some years old and uh, had a very successful life, very engaged aging, very known, and, 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 and so forth. And she and I sat down and she said, um, uh, I don't, and, and, and she had a lot of body manifestations, you know, she had like close to, I don't know how many surgeries on the lower back. And the doctor eventually said, there's nothing more we can do about your lower back. We have had done enough surgery. 
And, and today, as we were sitting down and talking, she mm -hmm. began to talk about some very fundamental issues. Her father had never been available. If anything, we had very harsh, cruel individual in her life and in her perceptual life. Mm -hmm. And she said, I've done my prayers. I've done letting go. I've tried every single thing I can think of. But I can't seem to let go of these thoughts. They just keep coming back up. They keep coming back up. And, and this is a story I hear almost all the time. And she has been diagnosed with depression, and all of the above, the insomnia, and God knows, and this is something. So in the modern sciences, uh, especially in psychiatry, we have taken the symptoms and made them diseases. Absolutely. Um, uh, depression as a complex. Now we have this DSM-5, uh, which is the newest uh, you know, tool, tool for the psychiatrist. So it gives a symptom complex. You know, if you are not sleeping well, you have poor concentration, uh, you're feeling sad, and your memory is shot, and all those nothing, and you're suicidal, that means you qualify to be major depression. It does not even begin to address why. And that's where I think that we are at, at, at fault. Uh, we, after making the diagnosis, go on to looking at the medicine, and we pick up one or the other medicine to treat those symptoms. And no one really kind of comes down to the recognition of, I, we find here traumas that are many fold. Even we, we do a lot of treatments for addictions, and I would say close to 80 to 90 percent of people have some kind of a trauma floating in their life, which is manifesting as an addictive behavior. And then once you pee down that, you find that one thing, which really was a turning point in a person's life, and then that became a disease. And then the more doctors you say, see, the more diagnosis you carry. And the more diagnosis you carry, the more ill you feel and more victimized. I like what Tully says about addiction. You know what his answer to him? It says mm -hmm. the, the, the treatment of addiction is that the people can't get enough of what they don't want to begin with. And you have to think about that, but it kind of makes sense, you know? I think to add on to this energy medicine, and especially in the Rebus, and some of these German Swiss people are quite sophisticated with this energy medicine. But we have to talk about the chakras because their psychiatry probably is a little bit more. But you know, allopathic medicine is isn't, you know. And of course, that's where where problem is. And I think people are reaching out more for that. Anyway, okay, four one two eight two five six two six two. Why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit more about some of the. Uh, what you do here again at the at the clinic? Here. Yeah. So, as uh, Dr. Wegner is alluding, I, I do believe the energy medicine is the medicine of the future, or the present, actually. Not the present. Exactly. Because it already is happening, and, and when we say the future, we are saying there will be more awareness of its clinical benefit, um, and then its efficacy in our, our personal lives and the life of those that we care for. So at CPLAIR, we begin to embark on, uh, I, I believe that at a national level, these trends are happening. And, and uh, it's really not new at a national level. But at our local level, we embarked on this journey of exploring. So at CPLAIR, we were, after we recognized the limitations of the allopathic sciences, we began to explore the other, other methodologies and made our place as an open venue of meeting meeting of, of the minds of, of similar kinds. So we offer Reiki, we offer yoga, we offer mindfulness practices, we offer nutritional sciences, we offer counseling, and, and of course the allopathic sciences bring people here. But we use that as a way to allow people to explore other, I would say, cleaner medicine options. Uh, and uh, even, the, for example, the homeopathic sciences, and I, I, I love that whole concept. Um, it's the exact opposite of the usual way of thinking. Uh, in the allopathic sciences, we make something very concentrated, very powerful, and we see the more powerful it is, the better off it is. Whereas in the homeopathic sciences, as if I understand, we make a molecule weaker in its structural uh, you know, strength, but its energetic strengths continue to expand, and 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 thus it wipes with the, the the circadian rhythms and the biological rhythms of our life, and, and and thus it has more healing power than the limiting power of a of a molecule given in a concentrated formation. Uh, so, so we have integrated in the, what what appears to be the usual practice of psychiatry, 
but we are very clear and open that our niche is very different. Uh, we do bring in people who have been basically told by their doctor they're hopeless and, uh, and that they, they, there's nothing else they can do about them. Uh, whether it's the pain management issues, I have people who have been discharged from local hospitals and come our door and say, my doctor just told me there's nothing I can do about you. And I said, well, then he is very honest. <laughs> <laughs> you know, at least. Yeah, but you have to pay for that, right? <laughs> That's right. Why are you knocking at the door where the person is already telling you, I don't know what else to do for you? Uh, and we bring in these very simple principles that Dr. Wagner has been talking about to their, to their awareness and let them find what seems to match their clinical needs and what they're interested in doing. So you would say probably in, in this holistic setting, the most common patient complaint you get is, I'm on too much medicine and I want to wean off. Would that be fair to say or not? I would say that people um, are, are, that was our first, uh, since I'm an addictionologist, I used to get a lot of people with pain, pain, pain addiction. Pain. Sure, sure. Um, um, and, and I was surprised how many people out there are trying to use pain manage, management and they get addicted to them. Oh, sure. Uh, we have, that's one of the national epidemic, actually, at this time. There are more people dying of pain medicines, yes, sure. prescribed medicines, than, than accidents on the road. Oh, sure. um, yeah. And then, so our goal was to really practically save lives by allowing people to know that the pain can be managed by other methodologies. And then the emotional pain that you, you know, Dr. Wagner alluded to earlier on is the second, I would say, the most common pain that brings people here. And, and the reason they come here now is not because they're looking for more medicine. They're looking for other ways to get better because they already have that enough. Okay. Okay, so uh, we have a special guest here today. You're listening again, Dr. Dan, Adventures in Natural Medicine. And we're here at the Seclair uh, Center here in um, Export, PA. Uh, just to remind you again that the Women's Wellness Weekend is coming up on October 13th this year. We're going to have a little, I'm sorry, October 12th. It'll be Saturday, October 12th. We'll have workshops, refreshments, samples. We always have quality speakers, lots of organic food. So please mark that. That's Saturday, October 12th, Women's Wellness Day at Nutra Pharmacy. We're going to take a short uh, commercial break right now. Keep it in mind that uh, our lines are open, 412-825-6262, and we'll be back in 60 seconds. Okay. If you want to mention we're live on Google Hangout, too. I'm going to say clear. What you want for a second, if you want to mention. Why don't multi provide them? Okay, we're back. Thanks again for tuning in this afternoon. We're here at a very special place today, Seclair, a sanctuary that provides a compassionate environment that provides, promotes healing of the body, mind, and spirit. Its director and founder, Dr. Safgar Chaudhry, is our guest here today. Before we bring him back on, I wanted to uh, thank Sven Hosford who, for putting this all together. He's going to come on now and tell you a little bit about some of the programs in the future and how you might uh, pick up on this program today. Sven, thanks for tuning in today. Dan, it's, uh, it's great to have you here. Uh, I'm really happy when uh, pillars of our community come together and start to, to form a, a bigger foundation of something. You know, I've been working in this community for uh, about 20 years now with uh, Point of Light magazine and then with Peaceburg, and now my new iteration is the ProWellnessJournal.com. And what I see happening is doctors like yourselves are really stepping up and uh, almost coming out of the closet in a way and saying, hey, this is real medicine. Uh, Dan, you've been doing this for years and years, but uh, you know we're having more and more traditional doctors step up and, and add nutrition to their 
to their uh, bag of uh, the, to their toolkit to the, the tools that they have in their toolkit. So one of the things that I'm really pleased about working with Dr. Chaudhry here is his commitment to public education, um, and that's why he invests so much in putting so many videos out on on the web. So if you go to say Claire. Dot com, which is S E C L A I R E R dot com, you'll see a lot of videos, several hours worth of videos of different topics. Um, every week we put out a new video on uh, what we call the educational grand rounds. So you can learn about the latest uh, treatments for these kinds of things. And even right now, we are live on Google Hangouts. So if you go to the St. Clair uh, Google Plus page, uh, everybody can watch the two of you guys in action. So I really want to commend uh, Dr. Chaudhry for your commitment to community education and to outreach to other professionals. I think you're really, uh, really a pillar in this community. Well, thank you, Sven. And again, that's ProWellnessJournal.com. And uh, okay, let's take our next caller. Hi, welcome to the show. Thanks for calling today. Hello, you're on the air. We must have lost them. Okay, again, that number is 412-825-6262. You're listening to Adventures in Natural Medicine, our weekly broadcast here on KHB, 620 AM. Again, thanks for tuning in this afternoon. Uh, if you want a copy of the newsletter that just went out last week, you should have had it by now if you're a subscriber. We send out many thousands of these, but you can call the store at 412-486-4588. We're open from 9 to 6 daily, 9 to 3.30 on Saturday. And also look on the web. It's been on the web for a few weeks now, www.nutrapharmacy.com. Remember, we spell pharmacy, then F, and U-T-R-I-F-A-R-M-E-C-Y, because we don't sell pharmaceuticals anymore, so we're trying to do this more holistic approach. So I'm really uh, glad to be here today. It's a beautiful day. These, these grounds are wonderful, so peaceful, so calming, so it just seems to be the right setting. Okay, uh, Dr. Chaudhary, what's uh, what else did you want to mention about your uh, mm -hmm. clinic and some of the you know patients you'd like to attract? To? So, uh, realistically speaking, it is um, it is the goal of empowering people with good knowledge mm -hmm. because people really with good knowledge can make good choices, and and so our goal is really when when we are doing our counseling. Um, so we have at this mm -hmm. time uh, this this this. Setting really did not arise as a, as a business idea. Uh, it just happened because I was myself getting into a point of recognizing that, that the present usual sciences, uh, as, as powerful as they could be, they are lacking some essential ingredients to hold things for, for longer time. Um, so as an example, allopathic sciences, if you have a broken bone, getting a cast and getting it fixed is perfectly the right thing to do. I mean, I was talking to my wife. My son had um, my second son. Uh, when when my wife was pregnant, she had uh, placenta previa. So the in olden days, she would have died of bleeding and and couldn't have survived. Both of them would have died from that. Uh, but the, but so we are really not here to say that the sciences, allopathic sciences, don't offer certain very magnificent yes. um, uh, conceptual yes. formulation. However, what we're saying is that we're overdoing things in the areas where they don't work. And, and, and it's very important to recognize that. So uh, if we have pain condition and we are giving more, more and more pain medicine and, and chronic conditions, you know, those are not going to just get better by, by people um, uh, you know, fix them and then running away from their underlying issues. You know, that's interesting. I, I always relate a story every now and then. You know, I think probably like myself, you've had this epiphany, you know, at one point in your life to say, well, you know, I, I, I have this wonderful education. I've got this degree, but, you know, can I color, move along? And I guess some of us color outside the lines, and that's not what the, uh, what the medical profession usually wants. But I remember being in, well, I had my epiphany back in 93, 94, doing a lot of rainforest work, but I remember sitting around with a one of the real famous shamans in that area in Belize, I think I was, in the mid-90s. And here's a guy, uh, Don Antonio Puzo, who was well known in the area. He's a little Mayan guy, wasn't even five foot tall. But he was talking to us, and he didn't really know how to read or write, but he had incredible knowledge about plant medicines. Mm -hmm. But he also had a, a very spirituality about the Mayan religion. Of course, the Mayan religion is 
is tied into Catholicism because of the converts many dec uh, centuries ago, but he really mixes them quite well. And he was talking to a group of us, and he says, you know, we talk about depression and talk about uh, psychological issues. And he used a couple words, and one was pesar, which is fear, okay? I, I have fear because, uh, you know, I think I'm going to die, or the uh, terrorists might attack. And then there's tradesa. Tradesa is sadness. I'm very sad because grandma passed away. I'm very sad because, uh, you know, I don't know, I lost my job or something like that. Then the last one is susto. Susto is just like bad vibes, okay? I'm really having problems with uh, uh, dealing with relationships and my marriage and things like that. Well, he would say that, and of course, they, they use the prayers, number one, but they use certain herbs and they use certain... Um, they, soups and things like that, teas I would say more, but he said that they are all completely different, and they are, they're completely different, but yet in our society we might just say, here, get on an SSRI, try a little Xanax, but he would say completely different treatments, completely different diseases if we want to call it. What do you think of that? Well, I think that they had a lot more wisdom, uh, and then we, we, we eventually returned to, I think the allopathic sciences in those domains are very reductionistic. Uh, we reduce them into symptom complex and then try to just mask them. Uh, or I would say they can be used as stepping stones. But going back to your, uh, the fundamental principles of human psychology are far more deeper and they are really kind of connected to the cosmos. Okay. Um, sure. So we are not as individualistically doing this dance of life. This dance of life is based on the old earth and, 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 the, and the biology of the universe and the cosmos. So, so these principles, these, these Mayans and others in different regions, they were very energetically aware and thus able to see that beyond what met the eye. And they were able to draw from the nature and I would say even the universe healing capacities, uh, whether it was a medicinal tool or an energetic uh, awareness yes. and all of that really kind of brought in that healing because when we become so empowered that I know what to do that's where our decline begins. And you know the funny thing is how did they know they were empowered? Well in some of these uh, cultures in the case of uh, Central America the Mayans they had to have a sign from God they had a sign and it was called a sastun. And mm -hmm. a sastun is when they were ready to go and, and be the doctor, priest, or the healer, whatever you want to call it, the, the shaman, that they got this sign. And the sign usually was, uh, an assassin was sort of like a, a special stone. And some of these places, there are no rocks in the middle of the rainforest, but, you know, a rock falls from the sky, or they, they look out one day and there's this shiny stone. And, of course, this is their sign. <laughs> but it could be other things, but it's very interesting how they look at that. But I, I, I agree. I think that uh, another thing I remember him saying is, uh, of course, a lot of us were down there, were educated individuals, and he'd say, you know, the problem with you educated college people from the States is that you think too much, you know? <laughs> and, uh, you know, in a way, that's true. I think uh, we try to analyze things too much. So it's an interesting concept, but I, I do think this, this, this whole movement toward energy medicine is exciting. I mean, it's exciting. It's really kind of put some new, I've been doing it for four or five years now, so the two machines I use the most is this Ediscan from Germany, uh, and uh, this Reba machine, also a uh, German Austrian machine, but you know, I, I just think that a lot of these technologies now are that these these frequencies are measurable. I mean, think about what these iPhones can do. I mean, isn't this pretty amazing? I mean, I got one of those new things. I can't figure it out, but you know, you can bring in a movie, you can do your banking, you can talk to my daughter in California. Like, how do they do this stuff? Well, it's all frequencies, right? And I think it's just, of course, that technology was always there, wasn't it? We just had a discovery. So I think this whole energy thing is probably going to be a change for the better, I hope. <laughs> so the and more simpler. I think that we, we have com made our sciences very complex. Uh, and I, I sometimes tell people, you know, well, if you look at a tree, it really needs some very basic premises to be okay. It needs some soil. It needs some sunshine. Mm -hmm. It needs some water and the carbon dioxide, and then it just shines and it blossoms. The human being really needs some very basic premises of energetic, you know, kind of conceptual thing. You know, we need some good soil. Uh, 
you know, some water and anything. And our bodies then have the ability to be able to shine too. Uh, when we're chasing the symptoms, actually that's when it becomes so very hard for the so very people with such fearfulness. And, and so, so what we have done here symbolically, Dr. Wagner, to introduce, uh, we actually have a small um, farm where we grow our small vegetables. We have some chicken, then some goats, and some, some wild area where people can explore. As I was walking in for our, you know, this, you know, this session, uh, one of my patients was walking out. She goes, oh, I'm going to go visit those goats. Uh, and, and, uh, and because we're re really reconnecting people to the nature and being nurtured, and, and, and recognizing that they have a lot more abilities and capacity than they realize. And then rather than being victimized, they can be actually be victorious. Oh, yeah, and who would argue that nature is at one of those places where, you know, you really can shut down, relax, get away from all the hustle, craziness. And I, I like what Tully says about that, you know, because you mentioned the tree. Now, let's say you're in a very quiet, peaceful place. You're in the middle of the forest, right, he says. And say you could talk to the oak tree or the bunny rabbit or the deer, and you said, uh, what time is it? What day is it? What year is it? Of course, it has no meaning. Mm -hmm. And what would they say? It's now. It's just now. Yeah. And of course, I wanted your opinion on that because don't most people, especially who have psychiatric issues, yeah. they're either in the future, which is fear, or they're in the past, which is guilt. We can't get into the present moment. What do you think of that? <laughs> well, it's usually, usually. It's not even the people that I we see. It's us. I, mean, I figure it out very quickly that I was planning all the time and thinking about this and doing about that and the resentment and the anguish of the past and the and the scars which have not been quite quite healed. So uh, I would say my first awareness was even my own brain. Uh, because sometimes you think about other people and it distances from our own self. Uh, and, and this whole practice of mindfulness really kind of made me so very acutely aware of my own brains, uh, you know, going back and forth and missing the moment all the time. <laughs> Um, and then I'm, I'm lucky if, if there's a few moments yeah. there where I connect with the now. <laughs> well, it doesn't mean you don't plan for the future, you just don't live in the future. Because right? yes, yes. <laughs> the future's just a thought, right? Yeah. Where are you going to be next week? Well, you'll probably be here at your practice, but that's only a thought. <laughs> there's no reality there. Okay, we have a really special guest today, and uh, Dr. Chaudhry here is the director of the Seclair Integrative Psychiatric Medical Practice here. Yeah. It's at 341 Story Road, Export PA. Phone number 724-468-3999. And again, thanks for tuning in today. Our lines are open, 412-825-6262. That's 412-825-6262. If you have any questions, we still have about 15 minutes left for our guest or anything else that's on your mind today, please call. Um, you know, I was asked here today to uh, do a little bit of integrative approach to maybe this mental health. What do we have here? Is this the uh, program coming up, Body, Mind, Spirit, Counseling, and Movement? This is something new here. This is something really new exciting. here, so maybe <laughs> Dr. Chandi can tell us about one of your new initiatives here. <laughs> well, it looks like a little nice flower. <laughs> <laughs> lotus flower. The lotus flower. It's very, very cool in the, in the minds of those who do mindfulness practices. Uh, it, I, I'm told it has some special meanings. So uh, having said that, uh, we just have started a movement as a therapeutic intervention. Um, so we have a, a clinician, Greta Polo. Uh, she is uh, a movement therapist, and she just joined our practice, uh, I would say, within the past month or so. And the idea behind that is, you know, as, I, as I was indicating earlier on, uh, with fear we freeze and we retreat, and then we become isolated and withdrawn. And the movement is so very vital to return to a place of wisdom. And it's a very symbolic methodology. We actually have groups and, and, and ways where we allow people from very depressed, isolated, withdrawn state to return to a place of more, more openness and more, more wisdom, almost like transforming, trans transforming our pain into our wisdom and our song. And so Greta is very talented. I actually learn from her. So one of my excitement of returning to this place is that we have so many people who know things that I don't have a clue about. And 
So like even today with Dr. You know, uh, uh, Wagner today, I was so very excited to be here because I thought, oh, I want to learn about plants and, and, the, and, and their value mm -hmm. because my last learning was the digitalis in my medical school. I thought, oh, digitalis works you know, for the heart. You know, the curare makes our, uh, make sure, you know, our muscles are calmer. And I will, I, actually, I was also in, in the Amazon jungle uh, and they were showing us the actual trees because I have never seen those trees. And it's like, oh, I read off them on them all the time. And here it's right in front of my face. It's so beautiful. And, and so with that said, in the movement of, from the allopathic mm -hmm. model to the movement of these dances or movements of, of freedom, uh, I enjoy these new learnings. And that's what kind of makes me really so excited and, 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 and joyful. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would suggest that we find the same thing in our lives as well. Okay. Well, let's go to our callers. Hi, welcome to the show. Thanks for calling today. Um, thank you. Uh, were you speaking about chakras as in the seven chakras, I believe, the energy that we were just speaking about? Sir? Yeah, absolutely, sure, yes. Okay. Um, I, I, I remember reading about that in a philosophy class. Uh, and uh, I also had a, this, this was, I also had a question about. Um, um, I lost my train of thought. Can you explain the chakras and how we can, how we can release them through deep breathing? Yeah, yeah, I'd probably take time to explain them all, but you know, I, I think people who do yoga understand the chakras are mo no more than energetic points in our body. Think about plugs in the wall, okay? And there's basically seven chakras from the root chakra all the way up to the adrenals, the stomach chakra, the heart chakra, the thyroid chakra, the brain chakra, and the top. And they're all akin to certain emotional feelings, okay? Think about the third chakra, okay? It's right around the belly button. It's right around the solar plexus. Think about fear, okay? Well, how did we react when we heard of 911? We felt it in our stomach. How do you feel if there's a cop behind you on the highway and they're ready to pull you over? You get these butterflies in your stomach. It's a third chakra. So we see that when we get into these deep-seated emotionals, that these things are locked in chakras. Another one in third chakras would be like frustrations repressed emotions. Okay, say I'm uh, breaking up my relationship after a long time. That's the fourth chakra. So the fourth chakra is affected. Now the issue is, are these conflicts long-term, deep-seated, or are they more recent? Okay, if I was going through bankruptcy, divorce, or find out cancer, it might be very recent. But a lot of times, the deepest ones are deep, and they're deep inside when we were inside mother, when we were a little kid, our perceptions, and a lot of times these things come out. But you can only fight one battle at a time. We all have more than one, but we have one really deep one. And sometimes that one comes up first, but it's your body's energetic wisdom that will say, you know, you got to deal with this one first. You've got to deal with the current stuff, and then we'll get into the deep stuff, or the deep stuff. But, it, of course, the body's energy is never wrong. It just tells you what it needs to do at this time. I don't know if that answers your question, but go ahead. Yes, and I also have a question about, yes, that, 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 that. Yeah, I don't know much about them. I know there's a couple of chiropractors that bought them. Um, I quite, they're quite expensive, and I think they're, they're under a little scrutiny from the old government and FDA. Uh, so when, what I know about them, you know, you're just in this chamber, uh, and you're floating in some sort of fluid. And, of course, it's dark, and your mind can just really become still. And I think there seems to be a big advantage to that. I mean, it's, it's what we all need to do. I mean, we're all a little crazy in this country, let's face it. We all need to calm down a little bit. But uh, do you know anything about these? Uh, no, no. Yeah, I think that's all I know about them. I, I think that I'm not certainly, I haven't done it myself. I mean, the closest I ever came to anything like that, and I was down in Central America, and I went into this Mayan cave. And it was like 500 feet into the ground, okay? And we have these flashlights. And, of course, when you get into this chamber, everybody just turns off their lights. And, of course, it's so dark, you can't see your finger, you know, two inches from your, from your eyes. And you just sit there for like an hour. And, of course, it's quiet. And, you know, you really, it really drives you a little crazy for a while because, you know, you can't get up and move around. You don't hear, of course, you may hear some sounds. But it's, it's the same sort of thing, I would imagine. But it's, it's really... A, an interesting experience, I would say. Okay. Thanks, Thank thanks for calling. Is there another caller on the line waiting? Go ahead, you're on the air. Okay, maybe not. 
Okay, so again, we have a few minutes left, 412-825-6262. You're listening to Dr. Dan here on Adventures in Natural Medicine, our special program here today at the St. Clair Integrative Psychiatric Medical Practice. So how long have you been here? I mean, your grounds are wonderful. This is just such a peaceful environment. Does that seem to be what your your whole plan was here <laughs> for people who come? Well, I have quit having a plan. <laughs> Maybe that's good. Right? <laughs> have a plan, just don't be attached to it, right? <laughs> okay. um, we have been here for about eight years. Uh, and its original idea was really not to even have a business because I, my last place of where I really thought the medicine was practiced very well was St. Francis mm-hmm. Hospital. Okay. Uh, I was trained at St. Francis and I thought, I, I thought that they were a mission and but they couldn't pay their bills and, and thus they went under. But nevertheless, the people who were trained from that setting spread in the whole world and you know I, I happened to fall into this part of the world and begin to explore the possibilities. So we started out as, as a psychiatric practice, uh, but I knew that I had wanted to explore the other uh, avenues of uh, rich, uh, making it far more richer in the context of the allopathic medicine. So the grounds say we have uh, two properties here. One is, I, I don't even call it my property, it's my own. just being happened to be here in the moment, <laughs> uh, and thus passing through life. Uh, but having said that, we have obviously our site where we do a lot of clinical work, and we have about close to 15 people who are here at this time, some nurses, some counselors, some physicians, and some other, other clinicians. And mm-hmm. within that, we do the usual counseling, then what not, but our counseling is a lot more uh, in a based on integrated model of uh, delivery and, uh, and understanding. And across the street, we have a, uh, about four acres property where we're doing a lot more of what I call research and development, and that means goats and chickens. <laughs> <laughs> we're living in the now moment. <laughs> we're living in the now moment. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> A special guest, Dr. Asaf Dartrandri here. He's a board certified in addiction psychiatry, forensic, geriatric psychiatry. Uh, really great to have you out here today. Our number is 412-825-6262. We still have a few minutes left. Um, tell me a little bit about this psychiatric grand rounds that uh, you've been initiating. Is this sort of uh, open up to the public to maybe get opinions and experiences from other mm-hmm. practitioners? Well, yes. Uh, the usual psychiatric grand rounds are sponsored by a pharmaceutical company. Mm-hmm. Usually a lunch arises and then everybody has a great meal and they talk about a medicine. Uh, so we are exact opposite of that. Uh, not to say that we were not doing it ourselves at one time. And I knew that if you are having a lunch of a medicine, then you better talk good about that medicine. And, and, and there's nothing wrong about that because if you're fed something that you might as well talk about that. So this is an exact liberation from that whole idea. So we are inviting our experts in the field and Swen has been our uh, pillar. I, mean, I had not known as many people outside of my usual doctor's uh, company. And he has brought in some wonderful uh, clinicians like yourself. And, and the idea is to have a topic that is relevant to present day medicine, a conversation which is free for everyone, a thought which is provocative but also very meaningful, and it comes from our consciousness. And, and that really is the idea behind that, and it goes back to, I feel there are many, many people in our life who gave us the wisdom and the understanding to become who we were. And I think it's so very wild that we give it back to our community. And, and enrich them because there's not a day that goes by I see people who cannot make their co-payments, they're struggling with their insurance issues, their medicines are very expensive, and, and we want to let them know there are alternatives to that the barrier uh, towards good health. And I've been to hundreds of those dinners in the past as a pharmacist, believe me, <laughs> where the uh, drug companies promoting their product, and of course that's part of the game, I guess, but uh, yeah, that's interesting too. Well, you know, it's... I just think probably this is an exciting field. I definitely think it's a field for the future, but the present also. You know, some of the younger practitioners, whoever, psychiatrists, physicians, pharmacists, nature paths, we, we do a lot of traveling with them. I just came back to them, as I told you, last month from a, a group that I take every year to the rainforest to learn about natural medicines. We call it the Student Rainforest Fund. This is our 17th year. And we had a great group this year. We had a, some biology students from Penn State. We had a few of the pharmacy students from Peyton Duquesne, pre-med students from Temple, 
some uh, students from West Virginia, uh, naturopathics from Bastyr out in the uh, Seattle area. But of course, you know, they, they get to work with some of mm -hmm. these indigenous people. And they, even though they may not have the degrees after their names, they have wisdom. And uh, it's really amazing. I remember, you know, the other thing that uh, the, the great shaman Panty says was, all the cures for all the diseases are out there in the forest. God put them there. It's just our job to find them. So, so that's what we're trying to do, and it's a, it's a great uh, pursuit, I think. And, but I think there's a lot of aspects to this whole energy. And you know, what he would say, talk about energy medicine, is that if he had a disease or some affliction he did wasn't familiar with, he would get into a spiritual state, whatever he would take. Sometimes ayahuasca, but he would go out, and of course the the plants would talk to him and say, "Well, this is the right plant." And we can't judge that because, you know, these people have a real experience. And even though we don't think that way, we can't judge those things because I think there's just a lot of that connection with nature that we've lost many years ago. What any closing words there, uh, Dr. Shawnee? Go ahead. We have a few minutes left. Well, I think our nature should be preserved. Our ecosystem needs to be honored. And our earth needs to be taken care of. And, and, and uh, I believe, as, as you just said, you know, there's so much unknown and so much richness in the plant kingdom and the, and the kingdom of the world that we, you know, the, all, the, all the places that we, we have inherited. It's our really job to be able to you know, honor them as sacred gifts from our, our forefathers and give it to our children and use it as in, in, a, in a, not in a greedy manner, but in a more, more respectful manner. Well said. Well, um, Stender, if you want to speak real quickly about this program you have coming up in the spring, would you want to mention it real quick? We have a minute left or so. Well, we're still in the planning stages, but um, yeah, we're, we're going to, uh, in our efforts to make uh, Pittsburgh a real hub for integrative mm -hmm. medicine, we want to establish an annual conference. And Dr. Chaudhry has been doing them uh, for what, almost 20 years or so now. Um, so we'll have more details uh, on all of the websites as we come, but May uh, May 2nd is the day you want to keep that day, uh, especially for a practitioner. Uh, we're going to get some of the best local people together uh, for, I think, a full day of really, big, uh, really exciting uh, latest news in science. And let me once, once again mention the website here, so it's just www. Seclair.com, right? S E C L A I R E R. This is for enlightening uh, yourself with knowledge. This has just been a wonderful experience. We thank, again, having our guest today, Sven. Thanks for putting this all together for us. Dr. Chandri, MD, here, director at the uh, clinic at the Seclair. So thank you for being our guest today and uh, hope to have you back in the future. Thank you. It has been truly a privilege. Okay, well, we'll be here next week, same time, noon to one. This is Dr. Dan. Thanks for tuning in today, and uh, have a wonderful weekend, and God bless. Very nice. Good. Wow. Okay, we'll get us off the air here.